Oh, hi guys. Can you hear me okay? Testing, testing. Can you hear me okay? Great. Sound all right? Great. Right. Here we go again. Welcome. So the second Misty Ricardo live cook along. Today we'll be cooking a patilla curry, patilla, which is, as I'm sure most of you know, is a, a sweet, sour and hot curry. It's absolutely delicious. It's the favourite on the restaurant menus and it's been much in demand for this uh, 
in this current session. So we'll show you, if you finish with this, yep. We'll show you the ingredients. So for this, we're going to need the usual suspects. Suspects? I've been drinking too much beer. In fact, I've just had a few swigs of my bottle here, so I'm not actually inebriated whatsoever. Honest. So we've got oil, spices, powdered. We've got some, we've got an Asian bay leaf here. I know most of you. If not all of you won't have this, so just use a regular bay leaf or miss it out if you don't have it. And some cassia bark. You could use um, cinnamon instead if you wanted, but if you don't have it, just leave it out. Um, we've got usual, usual thing, garlic and ginger paste. We've got tomato, uh, tomato puree, which has been diluted about three times the volume with water. And what else have we got? We've got the prawns. I'm going to use prawns today. You can use any ingredient you want. Prawns go in right near the end of the curry, as opposed to chicken and whatnot going earlier on. Uh, and we've got a special ingredient here. This is tamarind paste, if you like, juice, pulp. It comes out of a block. Well, it comes in many forms, actually. You can use, uh, the best form is this, which is you buy this tamarind block and you soak it uh, for half an hour or so and mash it out and strain it and what you get is this really thick liquid you do need quite a lot of water to to soak it with it's surprisingly thick so we're going to use some of that only a, maybe a couple of tablespoons of that because it is very sour tamarind's a lovely ingredient it gives um a very slight sweetness but mostly sourness it's a fruit and there are other ways you can use tamarind one of which I don't necessarily recommend this, but you can use um, tamarind concentrate, uh, which is sort of, you need about a quarter teaspoon of that if you're going to use it, it's very strong. Or you can use um, a table sauce, you know, a tamarind table sauce. I won't mention particular brands, but th th there's a few out there. And as I'll mention later, you've got to bear in mind that uh, the table sources will have added sugar. So you need to compensate, uh, adjust the other sugar elements that you add. I've got some mushrooms as well, just to bulk out the prawns. In fact, you know what it is like when you buy a bag of prawns and it looks really big and once you've defrosted it and all the ice bits go off and once the prawns are cooked down a little bit, they're reduced in size and you think, oh, that's not much prawn. So I've got about 180 grams of, well, the packet said 180 grams, uh, but that's probably about 150. You can use less if you want. I'm going to have these mushrooms just to bulk it out and make it look a bit more generous. And we have a sweet element of the patilla, which is, uh, in this case, we're going to use jaggery, which is unrefined cane sugar. It originates, I think this brand originates from um, Pakistan. You can buy it in regular supermarkets now. Some of the bigger ones, at Morrison's, Asda, Tesco's and stuff. Okay, and then we've got um, about a teaspoon and a half of mango chutney. By the way, all the, the, the quantities of each of these things you'll need are actually listed in the video description, so I won't, I won't uh, give you the details vocally. Okay, just reading some of the messages now. <clears throat> the Oracle of BIR Home Cooking. Oh, thank you, Craig. Craig Person, is that you I used to work with? Ah, nice one. Welcome along, Craig. Uh, I hadn't spoken to Craig for many years until recently. Used to work with him quite about, what was it, about 15 years ago? Anyway, long story. Hello, Goosey. <clears throat> Did I just say that? Right. I'm just going to give you um, a basic introduction to the base gravy. I know most of you or a good proportion of you will know what base gravy is. What it is, it's um, 
es essentially it's a thin onion stock with other vegetables and herbs and spices in it which give a good foundation layer of flavours to uh, curry and it's used it's pre-prepared like this and it's used I've added to the curry so you can cook it quickly um quickly <laughs> start again cook it quickly uh as they do in restaurants and takeaways it may seem like a cheat and a bit like a fast food cop out but in fact what this base gravy does when it's cooked in a pan and you treat it right gives a lovely caramelized um really deep flavor that you get from the restaurant curry which you i'm sure that many of you in the past will have tried to recreate at home and not been able to because you've not been aware of the the techniques so anyway that's that's just some information for you uh, for those who, who don't know uh, it takes a, well, a couple of hours to prepare uh, but it's well worth it you can find the recipes for the recipes for all all my curries in my two books so all the base gravy and all the different uh, mixed powders and things are explained again I can't really show you in full but that's um, volume one Indian restaurant curry at home volume one available at Amazon Waterstones WH Smiths uh, uh, etc and you can go on my YouTube channel as you are currently don't go now because you leave but I've done a couple of preview videos that show you the contents so I'm basically flicking through and you can see um, get the gist of what's in the books so there's volume two um, same format just loads of new different recipes okay let's cook be right so let's get the uh, so I'm using the same pan I did last week. I've got some others. I was tempted to use a different one, but now I'm going to use this one again. Let me just, just adjust the camera a bit. Get the heat on the base gravy. I've got to put that on, so that might take a minute or two. Snake just ordered book two. Thank you very much. <laughs> Greg, hello Greg. Lava storm next, please. I know you're very keen to get me cooking that. You're a you're a sadist because lava storm is the hottest curry um, that I do. It's in volume two and it's uh, it will blow your head off. I don't think I'll be able to make it in this kitchen with the extractor fan off as I have to do to keep the noise down. Uh, I think I'd choke. So maybe. Right. Now, like last time, I think for those of you who watched the, the dress video last week, I took my time over it because I wanted to, you know, explain things properly. And I didn't want it to be too rushed and panicky. So I'm not going to cook on as high a gas as I normally do, for which I'd use this, um, this burner here. It just makes things easier and what I might do uh, from time to time is actually turn the heat off on this burner um, just so I can explain things uh, without the risk of me not being able to multitask and stop it burning. So how many people have we got? 187, that's pretty good, it's not too bad. And if you can share, see the button, uh, the button you press below the video, there's a share button and if you feel inclined please click on share share to facebook or whatever social media you've got to see if you can get any of your friends uh, coming along right, so the base gravy is heating up we've got the pan on and let's remove the ingredients over By the way, this this recipe, as most of my restaurant-style curry recipes are, feeds um, one to two people. 
it's like the same amount you get in from a takeaway usually so you, you know the score you order a chicken madras pilo rice and the an arm bread or whatever and quite often you've got some left over for the next day unless you're very very hungry and some mousy people can actually um <clears throat> two mousy people could eat a portion but you have to be uh, very unhungry for that cheers guys right let's get going for this one, I'm going to add about, it's about 70 or 80 grams of, of chopped onion, very fine. Let's <clears throat> turn the heat up a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to start, I'm going to try the metal spoon, and if anyone doesn't like the sound of the scraping, let me know and I'll switch to a wooden spoon. You're right, thank you. Almost forgot. We've got the cassia bark and bay leaf going in there. It's really to infuse the oil with flavour. A lot of familiar names here. Carl, Greg, Stephen, Paul, hello Paul Deans. Uh, say hello if you know me well. Andy Lees, hi. Trent Reznor, not the real Trent Reznor, but I was re dead impressed um, when you uh, commented on one of my videos, Trent. I, I actually thought it was the same, but the Trent Reznor, as in Nine Inch Nails guy. And I was sort of like, for a, for a short time, I was like over the moon and thinking, wow, that's a claim to fame. But sadly, no, it's not Trent Reznor. It's a guy from Sc Scunthorpe or wherever you're from. Chairs. You've got a nickname called Chairs. Chairs. Hello, Misty. Right, okay. Right, let's get going. These onions we're just going to sauce them gently. I normally have the high heat a bit higher, but taking it slow. There's no hurry. It's all good. We've got beer. So, who's having a little uh, imbibement of their own? Wine, beer, juice, coffee. Kato 61669, I knew but was recommended by Peter Bell from Carlisle. Mention him, please. Hello, hello, Peter Bell, if you're listening or watching. Good morning, Anne from Texas. Yorkshire tea. Oh, you're lightweight, Craig. You like, we used to have a beer at lunchtime when we were working. You remember, we went out to the pub. Rum and Coke, Greg, nice one. Yeah, I know. It's, it's easy to drink too much at the moment with all this lockdown nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense being locked down, but you know what I mean. Hello, Malcolm, how are you doing? Malcolm Doughty from the British Curry Club Facebook group. Hello, Sean. Sean Linden. And hello, Gary. I know all you people so well. Right, GC, G Creza. Sorry, Richard, I'm cheating tonight and ordering takeaway. So what are you watching this for? You're just you're making yourself hungry, aren't you? That's what you're doing. You're building up an appetite before somebody leaves a, a bag of food stuff on your doorstep. Hi Marcus, Gardner, you having a cider in Gloucestershire? I can think of worse places to have cider. Okay, taking it very slow, just, just sort of softening and very slightly browning the onions. I think it's about time now we put the um, 
ginger garlic paste in. There's about a teaspoon, two teaspoons there. Don't know how to do it really. We've got quite a lot of strong flavours in this curry with the tamarind and the other spices and lemon. And uh, I forgot to mention the lime. We use a bit of lime juice in this. I normally use lemon, but uh, I haven't got any lemon in, so I'm using lime. It suits me because it doesn't have pips in. So I've got the gas on low to medium. Normally it would be higher, but taking it slow and also trying to avoid making any mistakes. And I wish you broadly from Whitby. Thank you. Have I any curries that don't require base sauce? Yes. You made the bait staff curry and it was fantastic. Yeah, and not many, but there are a few Caddo Paneer in volume two and you can use meat in that instead of the paneer. There's a great um, slow cooked lamb on the bone curry in volume two. Um, home style lamb curry, I call it. Uh, Andrew Vaughan, can I have a shout out for me and Carl Jones? Yes, hello. Hello, Andrew and Carl. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting to the point now where the garlic and ginger is sort of sizzled away. I don't want to risk that burning. What I'm going to do is add, you don't have to add mushrooms, so I didn't mention it in the, in the ingredients list, but I'm just going to add them now. I'll fry them off a little bit. Hello Colwyn Knight, uh, Mike Oates in North Wales. Stuart, hello Stuart, Stuart Barnes, you cheeky bugger. So many, so many messages going on. How many people have we got? 217, that's not too bad. I think we had about 350 last time. Maybe in the dress recipe is more popular. Okay, now it's time for the, the powdered spices and the methi. We've got mixed powder, regular chilli powder, Kashmiri chilli powder, uh, salt and the kasuri methi, which has been scrunched up. Just going to add that in. Stir it around, I'm trying to get it on the surface of the, the pan. I'm going to add a little splash of base gravy to help the, give it the um, spices time to cook. You want to fry, you want me to fry enough so they cook through and release all the, the flavours, but you don't want to have them stick to the pan and burn, so you ruin the curry instantly. I'm just going to give that maybe 15, 20 seconds more. You, as you can see, the, it's not sticking, the base gravy is helping to, to protect that take the spices and I don't know if you noticed but these mushrooms have started to shrink already because they're mostly water when you cook them they, they do uh, reduce down and it's good to fry mushrooms to bring out the flavour caramelise them a bit I've got a brilliant um, well I think it's good there's a good um, mushroom bhaji recipe in volume 2 and uh, with that I actually fry the onion mushroom in advance and get them nice and brown so there's lots and lots of flavour and then take them out and add them later near the end of the, the, the curry cooking. Thank you very much for nice comments. Right that's me not not focusing enough. I'm gonna add the tomato puree that's I don't, you don't want much for this. You don't want the tomato acidity competing, really. Uh, it's just really for foundation, sort of umamis. And that, what's that, about a tablespoon and a half mixed with about four and a half tablespoons of water. So, we're taking our time with this. I'm going to leave that for another 30 seconds. Let the tomato paste rawness cook out. Now 
Now in this beforehand I added, it was about four tablespoons of oil, which is quite a lot. But you do need the oil to cook your spices and get the flavours coming out. You find that on a lot of curries, the oil separates nicely. So if you do find you at the end of cooking, you've got oil floating on the top, you can, if you wish, sort of spoon it off um, by tilting the pan. And, uh, you know, the, the oil sort of will go to, to one side and it helps you sort of scoop off. In my mind, though, you know, BIR curry is like once, maybe twice a week, treat. So I'd rather have, you know, the proper full fat version and eat salad for the rest of the week, if you know what I mean. Okay, right, so that is sizzling nicely. We're going to add some base gravy now. Some more. We're going to add about, I think that's about 75 millilitres, just short of a ladle. This ladle is about 100 millilitres. So I'll give it a stir once and scrape the bottom. I'm going to turn the heat up now a little bit to add the caramelisation. Now because I'm cooking on a lower heat than I normally do, so it gives us time uh, for this demo, you'll find that more water will evaporate despite the heat being lower. Because it's been cooked for a longer time, it will thicken up more than it would do uh, if you were cooking it as per my recipe with a high heat. And that probably explains why last week, if, if anyone wondered why the curry turned out quite thick or thicker than it normally would, it's because that, that was the reason there was more evaporation of water. Now of course what you can do there is just add extra base gravy, but because considering it's, the flavour's in there already, you could just add a bit of water if you wanted, it's not a problem with that. But taste it first though, make sure you taste it to see. Yep, Spud says stop stirring, thank you very much. <clears throat> My cooking structure. Got 245 people. Welcome to anyone who's just popped in. By the way, we're cooking a, a, a prawn patia curry. Sweet, sour and hot in the keynote flavours of tamarind and lemon juice or lime with uh, some mango chutney and, and uh, some good spices. So, you know, add some more best gravy now. Add another about, another about, about another 75 mils. Stir once and let it cook a bit more. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I wouldn't normally I keep saying that, but this is purely so it gives us time to talk. It's good to talk. Cheers. Oh yes, good good question. Anita Jones said, when would you add the chicken? That's a very good point. I should have mentioned it. Uh, if you're using raw chicken, you should add it very near the beginning. Like, for example, when you were cooking the, um, after the whole spices. And you cook the uh, put the chicken in raw. Try and keep it coated with oily the oily stuff. Stops it drying out. On well, pre-cooked chicken, you can add well any time really from the tomato paste points onwards. It just needs heating through. But don't worry too much about putting it in too early because it does pre-cooked chicken does hold its um, hold its own very very well. Surprisingly so. Uh, if you're using the lamb, you don't want to be cooking raw lamb in this dish because it would never cook in time you want to add it um you know at the same time you would do pre-cooked chicken uh, but it would have to be pre-cooked lamb obviously prawns go in near the end and of course vegetables depending on what you've got some take longer than others but uh, anyone who cooks with vegetables tends to know what they're doing because they're vegetarians mainly paul story can you shout the wife out please what's she done Jenny Story, hello. She's just cooked a lovely river beef, thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, Julie, add your raw chicken now. Uh, and slow down the cooking as well. You can, you can take it easy. The chicken's going to need some time to cook from raw, of, of course, depending on how big your pieces of chicken are. And I've, some, I, God, I keep on stirring. It's a subconscious urge to do it. I think it's because men, right, my theory is men can't multitask. I can talk, I can cook, but not necessarily 
at the same time at 100% efficiency. So what I'm finding, I'm talking to you, reading what you're saying, and without even thinking about it, without even realising it, my hand is going to the spoon and stirring. So there you go. Cheers, Andy. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Jenny Bennett says, can you shout out to my hubby, Tony? Tony Bennett. That name's familiar. I am his curry hero. That's oh, nice to hear, but just a regular guy. So it's reduced enough now. What we're going to do is add in, add in another load of base gravy. We're going to use about, I would say about 150 millilitres at this point. Just stir it just once to mix it through. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit now. Because we've got more stuff in the pan, you can you need a bit more heat to cook it at the right temperature. Mark, I'm a curry god, no. But you can call me sir, I don't care. Oh Nick, Paul, yeah, Nick, Nick Lingard, hello Nick. Oh, you want the metal spoon back? All right, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah a trick. You tried to trick me to stir it there. Very naughty. <coughs> oh, Andy, your takeaway adds a teaspoon of potato multi paste to every curry. Mm, thoughts. Right. In moderation, I think patax paste are good in curries, but only very moderation and not as a main ingredient. And certainly not in every curry. I know of several restaurant kitchens I've been in where they do specifically use patax balti paste in a balti curry, uh, and that's forg forgivable. For, uh, forgivable, that's okay, uh, but uh, not in every curry, no. Oh, you don't like that? Okay, you don't like the metal spoon. So the metal spoon is going. So we'll buy a metal spoon. Bye bye. Yes. Right. Now it's the tricky part with a, a patty of curry, which relies on a, a balance of sweet and sour flavours. It means to get the sweet and, sweet and sour balance right. And it's difficult because different ingredients have got different levels of sweetness. Now here what I've got is, we've got about a teaspoon and a half of mango chutney and a teaspoon and a half of jaggery which is the um, unrefined cane sugar, which you can buy in supermarkets nowadays. However, if you don't have the jaggery, which I'm, most of you don't, of course, just use brown sugar. Or if you haven't got brown sugar, just use white sugar instead. So that's the start. That's the beginning of the sweetness. I say beginning because we might need to adjust. I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of lime juice. I, I, Again, as I said earlier, lemon I usually use for this, but I didn't have any. But all good. So that's about a teaspoon and a half of, of, of lime juice. And now for the, one of the special ingredients, we've got the tamarind paste. Now this has been, as I said before, this has been um, extracted from a, a block of tamarind pulp. Um, a block of tamarind, which when you squeeze it out and soak it, you get this really thick um, juice sauce pulp. Now it's very tart so what I'm going to add is maybe two teaspoons of that. To begin with, stir it in, I'm going to have a taste in a moment. By the way, I didn't have any coriander again, so if you have coriander put it in now, uh, in the stalks I mean, if you cut the stalks very finely and put them in now, they take a bit of time to cook and it'll add a lovely flavour. And then you can add some chopped up leaves just near the end of cooking. Yeah, I think it works nicely with a patea curry. Any sort of fresh, zingy curry loves coriander. Would you prefer using a stainless steel pan for this dish? Why or why not? Um, personally, I, I like the feel of a, st uh, a steel pan, a uh, steel spoon better. 
Oh, hang on a sec. Sorry, you're talking about the pan, not spoon. Uh, no, I wouldn't like to use a stainless steel pan because it's not as good as aluminium. Aluminium will spread the heat more evenly and the sauce, if I may stir this just for a minute, when it sticks to aluminium, it, it, it kind of caramelises better. Also with stainless steel, you get like hot spots. Um, so certain areas of the bottom of the pan are going to reach much higher temperatures and burn the curry. So you need to sort of do more stirring of it. So um, if you haven't already added your main ingredient, whether it be chicken or chickpeas, pre-cooked chicken or chickpeas or lamb or whatever, just add it, add it now. In fact, add it five minutes ago if you don't mind. Thank you. Can you freeze your onion paste? Yes, you can. Kale and boys. So who's cooking along? Say, um, just say along or cooking along if you're actually cooking at the same time, if you, if you can spare five seconds. Mmm. Do you know what? That, the balance of flavours is pretty, pretty much spot on, actually. You know, I think that's... I don't think I'm going to need to adjust that. So, we've got more evaporation happening. What I am going to do is put in about that much more base gravy. And I'm going to whack up the heat, just to sort of demonstrate how normally you get, get um, better flavour. You've added a spot of homemade naga pickle, have you, Harry? That sounds interesting. No sound is separating. That's interesting. Helen? How much oil did you use? Oh yes, thirsty work, isn't it? There you go. Cheers, everyone. If you going back to the subjects of pans again, stop stirring, Richard. Turn the heat down, so slow it down a bit so I can talk. You can use any type of pan for a curry. There's nothing stopping you. Non-stick is okay, but you don't get that kind of sticky and caramelisation. Really, it takes longer. Uh, it's not. It's not as good. Stainless steel, as I said before, is not. It's okay, but not great. Cast iron is good. Uh, pressed steel, also good. You know, if you've got a pressed steel karai, I'm sure I can show you mine. That's my. It's not being cleaned, so forgive the appearance. This um, karai is quite a big one. But if you can get enough heat into it, <clears throat> it retains the heat much better than aluminium, so you can you can take advantage of, it, of the heat that way. You won't get as much sort of caramelisation as you would on an aluminium pan, but it's still good. And finally, uh, what's the ceramic pans? Uh, avoid them, in my opinion. They're not very good. I tried it a few times. Didn't get good results. Okay, what are people saying? ready for the prawns now. So we'll just add them straight in. Put the heat back up so I can cook now. I'm using raw prawns. I think they're better if you add them raw rather than use the, the pink pre-cooked ones that you buy. They uh, <clears throat> 
don't turn as rubbery. But with prawns, you want to be, you want to cook them quickly, enough so obviously they're safe to eat. But you don't want to overcook them because they, they shrink, and uh, go rubbery. And also the, they're a bit salty, so you might want to adjust your initial salt content. I used about a quarter teaspoon in this. I adjust it down. I normally use about a third, but I just adjusted it down just to counteract the sauciness of the prawns. And that'll take maybe two or three minutes. They were translucent when we added them, but they'll, they'll turn pink in good time. Yeah, you can have this as hot or mild as you like. I use about a teaspoon of cashmere chilli powder and a teaspoon of regular, I think. That's quite, that's reasonably hot. But if you want to use half a teaspoon of regular chilli or cashmere, if you don't want it hot at all, fine. But I think you need a little bit of heat in it. Just, if not, just for the flavour that comes with chilli powder. But you can have it dynamite hot, you can have whatever you want. You can have your Carolina Reaper chilies, your Mr. Naga pickle, or whatever you like. Yeah, all right, somebody's a comedian. Now, just a little splash of base gravy. <clears throat> so, I'm going to move the cassia bark. Mad, madness, don't do that. And the bailiff. <clears throat> what blender do I use, Richard? Really? I use a Kenwood. Wood stick blender. You can see it in my best grave video and see which one it, what, what it is. It's pretty good actually. Very efficient. Not the cheapest but still lasts. Uh, I'm not sure Julie how you take pictures. Uh, you could do a screenshot or you're trying to take a picture of what you're cooking. I've no idea, sorry. Right. Now that will be, I think that'll be enough time for the prawns. They weren't cold when they went in, they were kind of been left out for a half an hour, so they, they were you know, quite, quite um, more like room temperature. You can notice we've got, okay, we're not getting as, mu as much caramelisation as we normally do because we're not cooking on extremely high but you notice the oil separation is cratering it's a very good sign that the curry's cooked through properly and you've got uh, all this frond on the side of the pan and you go up close at that if you anyone cook you along if you just do the scrape of the spoon on the side and get some of that frond and then just taste it it's got massive amounts of flavour so that's why you should always scrape the good stuff back in and of course when you're emptying the pan um, to, to plate up always make sure you get as much stuff off as possible you see there's still there's some sticking stuff at the bottom which is good it's all flavour so shall we plate up then have a taste what do you reckon Five hundred! Wow, five hundred and three people. Hello, if you uh, if you just joined us, welcome. I'm Misty Ricardo. Um, my real name is Richard Sace, and I'm demonstrating the cooking of a of a prawn patea curry. Um, I think you've missed all the good stuff there. So anyway, this is the, the best bit actually, to be honest, plating up and having a taste.
just scrape all the good stuff out of the pan and waste it. Now you could garnish this as you wish. A slice of cucumber is quite good. A slice of tomato, fresh coriander, maybe even a wedge of lime or lemon. I'm not going to do that. Actually, what I might do, because I've got some spares, just sprinkle on some finely chopped onion on the top, just, just because I can, and they go to waste otherwise. Might give a nice uh, texture to the curry. Right. So, are we ready? Who else has um, got theirs ready for tasting? Let's go in. Hopefully the prawns will be tender. Get rid of this sauce and we must have the oblig obligatory close-up to the camera. Look at that, see if we can get it in focus. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Going in. Mmm. Oh god. Yeah, it's very, very nice. I'm not just saying that, it's really good. Mmm, yeah, we're gonna have some more of that. So what would be your choice of main ingredient for this, this uh, patty of curry? Lamb. Okay. Mmm. Chicken tikka, yep. Lamb potato does work well. Mmm. Thank you. Thank you for the nice comments. I'm gonna enjoy eating that properly a bit later. I'm so tempted to eat more of it, but yeah, that's good. Well, thank you very much for watching. I just noticed we hit the full 5.45 mark. Exactly, that's good. Thank you for watching. And please do remember to click the like button or smash it or whatever they say. Uh, share, like, subscribe, etc. But don't forget about the books because the recipe for this, fully written up and many others, is in... Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume 1, available at Amazon. And there are plenty, loads more recipes in Volume 2 also. Have a look on my channel, on my YouTube channel. Uh, there's a couple of preview videos that are recent, fairly recently uploaded, which will give you a preview of the content. You can buy the books at Amazon, um, Walter Stone Smith's. You can even buy from my own website if you want, but I have to charge postage. Okay, so any last comments, anyone? Six hundred. Wow, that's incredible. That's almost double we had last time. Six hundred viewers. Well, no point wasting captive audience. So, who's got something interesting to say? Ah, uh, see, see you, Craig. Nice to see you. I'll, uh, we'll talk. You want to see onion barges made? That's possible. Any ideas for next time? Anyone else? What you want to see cooked? Oh, this lava storm thing keeps cropping up. You, you really want me to suffer on camera. Cheers, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, tomato puree thing. Yeah, it's partly my bad. Quite a lot of people use, when I say, say, six, Six tablespoons of tomato paste, they assume it's six tablespoons of tomato puree. It's not, it's diluted with water. Dan Sack, a drac? We do the drac. I need to do something at volume two, I think. <laughs> if I need to try and sell copies of it. But uh, there are some good recipes in there. Does everyone want, um, how about a vegetarian recipe? Or a vegetarian recipe that can be adapted to use meat? Dan Sack, yeah, Dan Sack's proving popular. 
Coma for the girls. Oh. That's it. Yeah, it looks. I'll I'll put a post up on Facebook on my Facebook page, Mister Ricardo's Curry Kitchen, as a to ask everyone what they think they want. Yeah, Dan Sack looks very popular. That could be the next one. Right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to have a bit more of this. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, I'm very appreciative that you've all come along. Mm. Yeah. Right then. I think it's time to wrap up. So. By the way, the comments, the live comments, once the video ends, the live comments disappear. And what happened last week, I thought they'd gone for good. But I think what YouTube does, it takes a bit of time for them to do it, but they'll actually sort of process it. Maybe they're looking for spam and other naughty things, but they do, do come up, come back again tomorrow. So as soon as I end this live chat, you might find all, the, all your comments have disappeared, but they will come back um, if you look tomorrow. And also the video quality will be probably in its original format rather than the slightly less quality that you see it live. Okay, cheers guys, and we'll see you soon. We'll do the same thing next week. Well, not the same thing, but you know what I mean. Take care. Ugh, take care. Like we've got six hundred sorry, I should have ended it, but we've got six hundred and nineteen people. It seems such a shame to waste. I'm just, I'm just gonna have a bit more. Let's try a bit of this mushroom now. Mm. Okay. On that note, thanks again. Speak to you soon.